Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you a few techniques for sewing buttons without buttonholes. So these will be button and loop closures. There are a few kinds I'm gonna demonstrate. One is making a loop simply out of thread. And this is one of the easiest things that you can do. You can use this technique to replace any opening on the back of a garment that might say it needs Velcro or a zipper or anything like that. You can adjust the seam allowances and then simply sew a thread loop using the technique that I show you and have a button on the opposite side and you'll have a really cute and interesting closure. Another type that I'm gonna demonstrate is a fabric loop and button closure. So for these, I'll show you how to make the thin, narrow spaghetti strap loops out of fabric and then how to apply them on the center back of your garment. Generally, this will work best if you have a garment that's lined or has some sort of facing so that the loops are sewn in between that seam allowance and then they're extra durable. I think the technique that I have will help simplify the process and make sure that they're evenly spaced depending on how many you need to use on your garment. This type of closure can also replace other types that might be in some of the patterns that you have. If a garment has an invisible zipper, you can simply adjust the seam allowance and do a button and loop closure. And then to round out this tutorial, I'll show you a fun technique called a frog closure. So typically you'd see this on an Asian inspired outfit and they're made out of cording. It's a knot technique on one side and a loop technique on the other. These might look intimidating, but honestly, they're not that hard to do. So just be sure to follow along on the tutorial and you can replay it as many times as you need to see the actual process for tying the knot. And then um, I'll show you as well how to attach that to your garment. So let's dive right in and I'll show you how to do a few different types of button and loop closures. Here's a close up example on the back of the opening night dress. And you can see right here, this is the tool or the stretch mesh on the back of the dress. And on this example, it's joined with a hook and a thread loop closure. Now this is a super, super tiny loop, but you can see right here, there is a little loop sewn out of thread that extends right outside of that center back seam line. So for this one, it would just hook right into that loop to create that closure right behind the neck. Now this is the same type of technique that I'll show you, but instead of a hook sewn under the other side, we'll loop this thread loop that's sewn a little bit bigger around a button. Supplies needed to sew a thread loop and button closure are thread, a hand sewing needle, a button or as many buttons as you would like, and a finished garment up to the point where you're ready to sew your thread loop and button closure. To begin, you're just gonna thread your needle and just be sure that you have a double strand, the length of the entire piece, and then you've tied a knot down at the end. Then to begin the thread loop, we're just gonna sew right down here into this seam and then right up out the top. So you can see that right there, we have it going inside between these two pieces of fabric. And pull that until the knot is secure on the back side. Then we're just gonna go back in. And I'm gonna go right next to this initial knot And you can see here, I'm starting to form a loop. And my button that I'm sewing on the other side is a quarter inch button, which is pretty close to the same size as a pencil. So I'm just gonna slip a pencil inside this loop. Just while I'm trying to form it, and that will hold that. If you're doing this on a human sized garment, you can typically use your finger, but I think this loop needs to be slightly smaller. So I'm gonna do that and I have my thread right here. So now I'm just gonna wrap back around the pencil and come back down in through the top again. So I'm creating another loop, mimicking the same first loop. 
So just make sure that stays under the pencil and then pull that tight. And you might need to pull one thread more than the other just to make sure that you get that all the way smooth. And you can see right there I have, now I have four strands of thread looped around to create my thread loop. So now I'm just gonna slide the pencil out. Then I'm gonna begin from the back, I'm gonna come through the entire loop. And you can see I have another loop now with the thread I have forming right here. And I'm gonna come through from the top to secure that. And that's tying a very small knot around all four strands of thread. And I wanna make sure that I have that slid down right next to there. And then I'm just gonna continue to do that through from the back and pull inside the loop. And I'm gonna create tiny little knots around the entire loop. So you just wanna make sure that you're tightening those right next to the one that you just sewed. And you just keep looping your way around. So you can see right here, it's starting to form the little knots that are securing all four strands of that loop to create a solid loop. And this provides a lot of stability and structure to this loop. So we'll just continue working our way all the way around, continuing in the same direction from the back and then through from the front. And you just tie those little knots all the way around your loop. As you can see right here at the end, I've finished that now all the way around and you can see this loop now has a nice texture around the whole thing. The little knots go all the way around. So to finish off this loop, I'm just gonna sew a few times around on the back side. I'll secure that off right on the back with a, th a few little loops right through the back. And then we have a little knot on the back side. So here we have the loop closure on the wearer's left side back of this shirt. And then we'll go ahead and sew the button on this side. And to close, this is just gonna loop right over a button. Now I'm just gonna attach the button to the other side of the shirt and I'm just gonna show you a little tip that I like to use when sewing on a button so you don't have a big knot showing in your thread. So I have my thread threaded on my needle but no knot sewn in the end. So I'm simply gonna go where I would like my button and I'm gonna come up and down from underneath and then back up And I'm just gonna leave a small tail right here and I'm just gonna hold that with my thumb and then I'm gonna loop around that thread tail and do the same thing again, being sure that I'm sewing a loop. So I'm looping over that thread tail and that's tying a knot. And then I'm just gonna do that one more time. And then this is secure, it will not pull out and then I can just go back and trim off these little thread tails and then I'll continue to sew my button. And because we're gonna have a loop closure around this, I'm just gonna add a few extra 
loops around by just coming up from the bottom and looping around that thread and it's creating like a shank underneath the button it'll create stability on the threads underneath here so I wrap that around about three times and then I'm just gonna go right through the whole thing with my needle and then that's where I'm gonna tie my knot so I'll have a loop right here and I'll come through this loop two or three times and then pull tight to secure and then my knot is now sewn underneath my button and on the back side all I have are a few stitches that are barely showing so then here we have this loop and the button and you can see that we can just pull this loop right around the button to close the back of this shirt now you can have fun with this technique you can use colors that contrast with your fabric in this case we've pulled the mint green from the lining so we have a mint green button and a mint green thread loop but you could do a variety of different ideas to either have the buttons blend in or to have them stand out now you could also sew a few of these you could have maybe two more to create a different type of look on this shirt it fits pretty loosely so there's no pulling on this opening so we have just one that we've put on the center back right behind the neck but if you wanted to use the technique on a pattern like this and this is the cropped sweater pattern and it fits pretty tightly so you would want to have maybe four loops on the back side of this all the way down lining up with your buttons and then you'd want to create your button placement a little bit farther inside so that when it's looped because there's pulling on the shirt a little bit it'll keep it from having a gap in the back so you would just set your button maybe about an eighth of an inch in from the inside instead of all the way lined up with that center back edge to demonstrate a fabric loop and button closure I'm going to show you an example on the back of an opening night dress which is a Liberty Jane pattern now this dress is designed to be finished with a hook at the top so you can do a, a hook and a thread loop closure and then the lower portion of the dress is designed to be closed with an invisible zipper so you can see this here this is a small opening and there's a skirt inside and the overskirt so this zipper is sewn into the inner skirts opening at the center back just below from the waistline down so it's not a very large opening a couple inches so I'm just going to show you an example on my dress that's not finished yet how to replace this zipper with fabric loops and then buttons on this opposite side for this project you'll need a strip of fabric that's the same fabric as your project and I have this one cut one inch wide it's cut on the bias so that it has good stretch to it but it also prevents it from fraying a lot while I'm working with it then the other things that you're going to need are um, an extra sewing machine needle for the technique to turn this loop inside out we've taken the strip of fabric folded it in half and sewn it with a quarter inch seam allowance so I have a quarter inch seam allowance on this side and a quarter inch of the folded what will be the loop on this side and then I have my thread tails um, about four or five inches on this side down here and we're going to use these to turn it right side out but first we're just going to trim up this opening a little bit just to reduce the bulk as we try to turn it inside itself then I'm going to take the sewing machine needle and we're going to use the blunt end up here to feed it and push it through this loop but I'm going to thread my thread tails right here into the eye of this needle and we'll slide it through backwards so the blunt end is what we're going to push up through here and then these threads are going to be pulled inside the loop with the needle and it'll cause it to turn right side into itself so we'll thread that on here and then we'll tie a knot around this end and I'm going to slide it into this opening and push that through and it will con it will begin to fold over onto itself 
And if you have any trouble getting that to go in at the beginning, you can always use another needle and just kind of help push those raw ends inside that loop just to get it started. And then you'll just continue pushing this down and you'll see now it's starting to pull. So the end is turning inside itself and that I'll just keep pushing that needle all the way through. Find that needle again. So now we're coming out the other end and I'm gonna start pulling that thread. You can see that right there, I'm pulling that. And then right here now you'll see that loop is coming out of this hole. So as we continue to pull that down, it continues to turn all the way right side out. And it continues to just fold back over itself. And there we go. And then now we have this loop and it's turned all the way right side out. I have the back of the opening night dress on the end of a sleeve board and it's pinned here just to keep it from falling off the board. So now we have pressed the seam allowance line for the invisible zipper, which is about a half inch right here, just so I have a guide to run my loops. I'm gonna take a piece of steam a seam and that is this product which comes cut a quarter inch wide and it's a sticky double-sided fusible tape. So we're just gonna set this right into the seam allowance line and I'm gonna put it on both the lining of the bodice and then this lower part of the bodice just above the waistline and then only a little bit beyond that. I'm only gonna sew two loops right into this waist area not down in the skirt area. If this secures with a loop, this bottom part doesn't need to have the button and loop closure down. It'll just stay together. So this right here is that steam -a seam product and I'm just gonna press that. It's just like two seconds and you can see that sort of change color as the glue is activated. And then we'll just wait a minute or two for that to cool. And here we have the finished loop that we just sewed. So you can see that it has a seam line right here. So we're just gonna make sure that we have this folded like this as we apply the loops like this so that that seam is facing up right now and we pinch the loops together to create a loop that will open like this. And then from the right side, you'll have a loop that's just the folded edge and your button is gonna slide right into that loop. Now we're just gonna begin placing the loops right below this waistline seam here. And like I said, we have this seam up and it's on the seam allowance. And then I'm gonna just fold that loop back around with the seam up to form my first loop. And if this is my seam allowance line right here, then the part that's extending past is gonna be my loop. So I have a quarter inch button that will loop through here that will need to fit through this hole. So I'm folding that in half like this and then I'm just gonna fold this back up, space it apart enough so that I just have a second loop that extends the same amount right at the base above this waistline seam. So I have both of these loops right here and then I'm just gonna fold this lining back over and it had the steam -a seam on it as well. And then I'm just gonna press that down again. And that activates that fusible tape just one more time and it'll hold those loops in on both sides. Then we're just gonna go ahead and sew this seam allowance line right here on the sewing machine. And then the inside of this skirt opening will get finished when we attach the skirt lining. And here we have this sewn down. So I'm just gonna trim off this whole seam allowance and clip around this corner. 
And then we're just gonna go ahead and when we turn that right side out, you'll see those loops are right there. So we have two little loops that you can put a shank button through. And then if you're looking at something that looks similar to the back of a wedding dress, you would have a fabric covered button, the same color that will then poke right through these fabric loops. So then as we finish the other side of the back of this dress, and you'd have those buttons right here sewn onto this side on the center back, and then these loops, they would come right over those buttons and you would secure that opening that way. And then up at the top of the tool, we would just sew a thread loop on here that can loop around either a tiny little button or a tiny hook, like we showed on the example of the blue dress. Another way to do a loop button closure without actually making your own spaghetti strap loops is to use a cording type of trim. So here we have this pink cording and it's about an eighth of an inch wide. You could also use um, narrow elastic that's corded elastic and those are about the same size as this. And then your loops actually would have a little bit of stretch in them which will make them even easier to loop around your buttons. So to do this technique, I'll show you quickly on these two pieces of scrap fabric. So I'm gonna use this side right here as my seam allowance. And I have two pieces that I'm gonna end up sewing right sides together and my loops will just be enclosed in that seam, which would be at center back. So you could use this technique on the center back opening of a dress or anything like that that might have Velcro on the closure. And instead you wanna have a loop and button closure. And then you can also just decide how many loops you want along that center back area of your dress or top. So to start, I'm gonna use this Steema Seam product and it comes cut a quarter of an inch wide. And I'm just gonna put this right down here on this center back seam allowance. Now the great thing about this is that it gives me the actual exact seam allowance guide because it is a quarter of an inch thick. So we'll just press this lightly very quickly just to adhere the glue. Then we're gonna go ahead and peel this paper off. Then I'm gonna repeat that for the other right side of my center back opening so that when I cover my loops, the steam seam will be on both sides securing that together. Here we have the center back piece of fabric and the steam seam is applied, it's slightly sticky. So I'm just gonna make a few markings on here to have my loops all measure about a half an inch apart from each other. So I'm just gonna put a mark here and then a half an inch down. Now I've marked these right next to the seam seam so that'll still get covered with the seam allowance line. Then I'm gonna take this cording and just loop it right on that marking and I want to have it extending about the same amount that is the seam allowance. So you have like a quarter inch loop extending out and then I'm going to fold my next one right on my next mark and press that down so secure. Now another method is to just carefully place them on there and press them as you're setting them down. It depends on how sticky your Steema Seam product is. Another thing you could do is run a glue stick along your fabric and set that down on the glue and then just wait for it to dry and that you can sew through fine. So we're just gonna lightly use the tip of our iron and that sort of just activates that glue on the seam allowance line and then that's staying right on there. And then I'm looping that back around and then we'll just press that. And we're just being really careful not to press down on the steam seam that's on the fabric, but just right where that trim is. Then once I have those secure, I'm just gonna take my other piece of fabric 
and we'll line that up right along the raw edge. And I'm gonna go ahead and just press this down. And we have this pressed really tightly right in here. So all of our loops on the inside of the fabric now are in between those two pieces of fabric. Once we've gone ahead and sewn that seam allowance line and we trim all of this off, you would flip your garment right side out and then you have loops that are sewn into that so you can see them from the front and the back. It's just very clean and you would have little loops popping out. And then on the other side of the garment would be the buttons and these would just loop right around your buttons. Making the knot for the frog closure is fairly simple. You just have to follow the steps in the order that I show you. So we have a piece of cording right here and it's about 24 inches long. And we have one side right here, which I'll call the short tail. And then I have the longer piece extending off to the left. So for the first step, we're gonna take this side and loop it around so that we have a loop cross like this and the short tail's right here. Then we're gonna take this side and loop it around so that it's crossed over the top like this. So basically you have a bow at this point and it's crossed just like this in the center. Now we're gonna take this tail on the right side and we're gonna go over both loops and then from the back come around and come in through this loop to the front then you're going to go back in through this loop and then back through the back side on the left loop one more time. And I'm going to hold that down here and I'm going to pull this side tight and then pull this loop down here and that tightens our knot. And you pull it through from the back and then pull this long cord. And you just keep adjusting it until you have your knot the way you want it. So you can pull from the inside and then pull down and then you end up with this knotted, this little knot, which then will become the button end of your closure. Now to finish off the end of this button, which would be the part you would sew down to your garment, you can do the style here, which is a flat braided texture. So to do that, you would determine the length that you want and you have your short tail hanging right here. And then we're just gonna kind of braid underneath the knot. So you loop under, cross over, and then fill inside this circle again, and then loop under and cross over and try to pull it tight. And then you're gonna loop inside this circle one more time. And then we'll go around the back again. And then on this last time, where we have that braided piece, you're just gonna shove this little tail through to the back. So now that we have this braid and the little button end and both ends that are pushed through this center hole, I'm just hand sewing this down right here And I'll come all the way through all three of those edges like that. And that'll keep that loop nice and secure. And then I'll just work my way back through them on this side and catch these ends in that. 
It's kind of like sewing a running stitch. And then you can work to shape it as you're doing that. But you can see I have a nice braided front part and then this circle part at the bottom. And I'm gonna trim these right here, just on the inside. And then we'll go ahead and just dab either a little bit of fray check on there or even some glue and just wait for it to dry just to keep these ends from unraveling. So this right here would be one side of the frog closure. So now to do the opposite side, instead of tying a knot, you're simply gonna need to just make a small loop and you can determine the size of that loop to see what fits around that knot. And you don't want it to be too hard to get on, so just enough so that you can loop it around. So you'll just pinch your loop and then we're just gonna sew a few stitches right through here to secure that loop and keep it closed. And I'll just wrap that right through there just a couple times. And you would take that loop and you would basically just create the same thing that you did for this side on the opposite side. So you just wanna be sure that your, your starting loop is the same length when you come around like this. You don't wanna have one side longer than the other and then you're just gonna go behind this loop. Then on that last time, we'll just pull that back through the back. And then you have a matching size of your frog closure. So we'll just finish this the exact same way by hand sewing down on the back. So here we have that finished frog closure. So we have this loop side and this little knotted button side. And this is how they would loop together and be sewn down. You could use this as a closure for a belt around the waist of a dress. And if you sewed each of these ends to a strap, either a leather strap or a fabric strap, and then this part became the buckle and this could be on the front or the back of the garment. It can also be used on an Asian inspired dress or top on the back. So I'm sure this will be a lot of fun to incorporate in some way into some of your designs. Another type of design to use with this knot for the frog closure is one where instead of a long looping braid to attach to the garment, you create little tiny looping swirls. So to do that effect on this one, we're gonna use glue. You can use tacky glue, fast dry tacky glue, um, or even hot glue, which dries faster. You just have to be really careful with your fingers. Uh, each tail piece is cut two inches long, and you're gonna run the glue along the trim, and then we're just gonna turn it and curl it onto itself. And as you turn it, it will create a spiral loop. Once you have the swirl formed, but the glue is still slightly wet, you could just take a pin and secure that right into it and then allow it to dry. And depending on the type of glue that you've used, you might need to let it dry overnight, but it might only take 10 or 15 minutes. Then we'll continue that same idea on the other piece of trim. And then we'll sew through those to secure that to the garment and this becomes your button right here. And then to create the opposite side with the loop that will go around this button, you can do that with glue as well. So right here we can either just apply a little bit of glue and wait for it to dry or we can just sew a few hand stitches right through there. We've put a dab of glue right here to hold this loop. And while we're waiting for that to dry, we're just gonna trim down each of these sides to be two inches. 
And then we'll go ahead and follow the same technique used for this side to create matching swirl designs on this other side of the closure. Then we'll go ahead and just let this dry. Once they're dry, then we can hand sew or machine sew, depending on the type of trim you've used. You'll sew this down onto the wearer's left side, and then this is on the wearer's right side on the back of a garment. And then these two pieces will form your closure, and that'll just loop right over this knot, like that, to hold that shut. Now a traditional frog closure has three loops on it. For the doll close size, this gets to be pretty big, but if you wanna finish it this way and have two, that's perfectly fine. If you wanna add a third swirl, right in the center area, then you would just take an additional piece of cording to make that third swirl. And it would be freestanding, so you do this one on its own. And once you have your third swirl formed, when you attach this to the garment, you can sew these three pieces so that you have three. You'll join these two right here, and then you'll sew this third one right into that. So then you have three swirls and then you would want to mirror that on your other side. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial about how to make your own frog closure. This is definitely a unique and interesting type of closure, especially for a doll clothes garment. If you've done this on any of the things that you've sewn, I'd love to see it. So jump over to the Facebook group and upload any pictures of projects you've had where you've used frog closures.